I'm the chairman of pediatric services in Adassa, so I'm in charge on all the pediatric services in two hospitals, in Mount Scopus and in Enkeren. We have uh, over 300 beds for children, uh, over 100 doctors, and several hundred nurses and other paramedical team members. But it didn't born like this. It was a long process until we achieved this day that I am able to show this video. And how it started? It started in 1909. American woman by the name of Henrietta Sold comes to Jaffa and she forms this organization, they call it Hadassah. At that time there was a movement of Jewish women that wanted to study the Torah and to be more independent in the Jewish identity. They formed groups, they called it America Daughters of Zion. And they had names of Devorah, Yael for the Bible. Hadassah is the Hebrew name of Esther. And they formed this uh, uh, organization near Purim. They tried to teach them how to deal with their children. Because at that time in Jerusalem, there were no running water. So every family had a pot of water that they changed once a week. And with this water, they wash hands, dishes, themselves, the babies, the mothers, and of course, uh, uh, diseases and epidemics were very prevalent. And they sent milk to women who could not come. This is the donkey. They called this room Tipat Halav. Those of you who live in Israel know that until today, the national service for pregnant women and infants, free immunization, free, free uh, developmental assessments are done in Tipat Halav. Because after 48, Hadassah gave this chain of stations to the state of Israel. So the first Tipat Halav was built by Hadassah in the old city, and they used to send with this, they call it Donkey Express, send uh, milk to those women who could not come to take the milk from Tipat Halav, where they were. They started having lactating workshops for women to teach them how to lactate the children. Uh, here we can see they treat the children in schools with eye drops to prevent trachoma and blindness. Albert Einstein uh, was a very good friend of Lord Herbert Samuel, who was the British Commissioner at that time. And this is uh, 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 in the stairs of Augusta Victoria in Jerusalem, where the, uh, uh, Herbert Samuel lived at that time. And Einstein gave the first scientific talk in the Holy Land. This was the most modern hospital in the Middle East. Patients came from Alexandria, from Damascus, from Beirut, from Baghdad, to be treated in Hadassah. Hadassah had two major departments. First, ophthalmology, because blindness was very common in the Middle East at that time. And second, obstetrics. And in 67, Jerusalem was united. Hadassah decided to renovate the hospital and to build it, the hospital in Mount Scopus, as a community hospital. And I use this slide, I give lots of talk about the history of Hadassah in a non-Jewish audience in universities in Europe. And I use this slide in order to show them the difference between what was there in 1939, there was desert, and now what we see here are huge Palestinian neighborhoods surrounding Jerusalem with thousands of people living there, but they were not there before. So we are contacting the uh, uh, health ministry in Ramallah. They choose people in Gaza that they believe fit to the program. These people need to have the clearance from Hamas because they leave Gaza and come back to Gaza. After they have the clearance from Hamas, they need to have the clearance of the security service of Israel. And after that, it took about three months. We had a team, three doctors, a nurse, and physiotherapists. They need to come to work with us. So the first thing, we send them to Ulpan Akiva, Natanya, to learn Hebrew. Because if they want to work with us, they need to know Hebrew. So they went for three weeks to Ulpan Akiva, and after that, they come to us. Now, you have to see the faces, and I regret I don't have the camera at that time. They come to the hospital, they see Palestinian patients, they see doctors, hey, where did you study? I studied in Syria. And where do you study in Amman? And you work here? Yes. They were sure they're going to the mouth of the monster. The monster 
that kills children. No children, they will kill women, the Israelis. But treating Palestinian children together with Palestinian doctors, they even didn't dream about. They were sure at the beginning it's camouflage. It cannot be. I think it took them about two to three weeks to relax and understand where they are and start working with us. And uh, in the internet site of Adassa, there was this message from a, a guy from the Gulf area. And what he writes here, he says, regardless all the politics and regardless my opinion, as an Arabic guy about Israel, I am forced to admit that I am so impressed with what I've seen. Arabic patients being treated in the hospital, Arabic staff working there and wearing hijab, exclamation mark. I am really surprised. And this is the guy who hates Israel, but must admit that he is surprised. He did not believe that this can happen. This is the only uh, general tertiary care academic hospital in the whole area. Um, it's a center for excellence in medical care, in humanity, in teaching, in research. All aspects that you can think of medicine is Adassa. And everything that is being done in Adassa is something that is being given to the state of Israel. Because the medical system in Israel is uh, uh, divided. Either the hospitals belong to the government or they belong to Kupat Cholim, to the health funds. Hadassah is the only hospital that does not belong to both of them. It belongs to the Jewish world. It belongs to all the people, the Jewish people around the world that support the hospital in order to bring it to the level that it is today. But really what makes Hadassah what it is, is the human quality of the people who work in the middle of one of the most complicated places on earth, in the middle of Jerusalem, speaking like this out of their hearts. Not because this is what we have to say. And this is what makes Adassah so special. So thank you, Professor Ita Kerem. And we're going to give you this certificate of appreciation, saying that we gratefully acknowledge the presence of Professor Ita Kerem in Mexico City for sharing with us your outstanding contribution to the Adassah Medical Organization. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.